Hi everybody, uh, in this video we're going to make a really simple app using HTML, CSS and even a little bit of JavaScript. That's that's going to be in a later video. Um, and the idea of this app is that we're going to create a, a crossword where you can type in answers to the crossword and then they'll automatically be filled in. So this video series is going to be a little bit of an extension to what we did earlier in the year on HTML and CSS. Um, and hopefully you guys can still remember some of the HTML and CSS commands that we learned. But if you don't, uh, this video is going to remind you of a lot of that. OK, so um, what I'm using is Notepad++ in order to enter my HTML. Uh, of course, you could also use some of the edit other editors that we looked at before. So that could be Atom um, or it could be uh, Visual Studio. Some people I know have Visual Studio on their computers. Um, you could even use the Notepad uh, editor, which is built into Windows, but I don't really recommend that because it doesn't give you very much help. Um, so one of the nice things about using an app like Notepad++ is that it gives you help when you're typing HTML. OK, so I'm starting with a blank file and because this is an HTML file, I have to start by writing open brackets. Uh, now these are the angle brackets, the same as the less than and greater than symbols, then an exclamation mark, then I'll put doc type HTML. OK, now in my HTML file, you might remember that we write HTML commands using the angle brackets. And every command has a start and an end. The end is written the same, but with a slash at the beginning. So this is the start of the HTML code, and this is the end of the HTML code. Now, at the moment, I don't get any help when I type, a, when I type HTML. That's because Notepad++ actually doesn't know that I'm typing HTML at the moment. If you want Notepad++ to realize that you're typing HTML, then you need to save it first. So I'm going to go to Save As. And then I'm going to call this crossword.html. And because I wrote .html at the end of the file name, when I save it, Notepad++ realizes that this is an HTML file. And you can see that the color changes um, and it's starting to give me some help. Like it shows me where the start and end of different HTML tags are. So if you're using a different editor, it probably works in a very similar way. Um, you will probably start to get help once you've saved it on a file name uh, which ends in .html. OK, so now let's um, start creating our crossword. Um, and the first step is that I'm going to need to write the body of the page. So the body is what shows up on the web page. There are some things that we don't want to show on the web page, like if we write some CSS or JavaScript code. Um, and we're going to do those things later on. Uh, but at the moment, we're just going to write the visible part of the page, and that needs to go inside the body tag. So I write the start and the end of the body tag. And you might remember that when I write a tag, I try to space inwards if it goes inside another tag. So because I put body inside HTML, I put a space at the beginning. I did that using the tab key on my keyboard. OK. Um, now, what I want to do is to create a, uh, well, first of all, let's put a title. So I'm going to use the H1 command to make heading number one. And the title for this is going to be uh, Computer Science Crossword by Mr. Cressy. Now, guys, obviously, you make your own crossword. You can choose your own questions um, and design it however you like. OK, um, so. This video is going to teach you like the, the important technical parts, but I really want to see you make your own designs. So I'm going to save that and then I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to my desktop because that's where I save the file. Um, and then on the desktop, I'm looking for webpage.html. That's the name I go. Oh, sorry, crossword.html. And there it is. So if I double click on that and it's opened up in my browser, um, and you can see that we've got the heading. OK, now the next step is I actually want to have a grid for the crossword to go in. Now to make a grid, I'm going to use the table command. So I write table like this. And of course, I write the end command as well. And then inside table, um, 
we are going to create table rows. So the rows are going across the screen. So to make a table row, you put TR. Notice that every time I write an HTML command, I also write the end for that tag, right? So that's the start, that's the end, and I put them in pairs so that I don't forget the end. Um, if I write a lot of stuff, I don't want to forget the end um, after I finish writing all that stuff. Now this creates a table row, but what I want to do is now to put squares inside that row. So to make each square, I use the TD command, which stands for table data. So each TD command is going to be one square. Now I could put the TD and the slash TD on two different lines, but um, that would take up a lot of space. So I'm actually just going to put them both on the same line to make it a little bit neater. Now I want my crossword grid to be eight squares across and eight squares down. So I'm just going to copy and paste this eight times. That's one row. And now I'm going to copy and paste the whole row eight times so that it goes eight squares down. OK, so that's my crossword grid. You can see it's quite big. Now I'm going to save it and hit reload. And you might be surprised to see that nothing is actually appearing. Now there is a grid there, but the reason that we're not seeing anything is because it doesn't have grid lines. So the grid is basically invisible at the moment. If we want to show the grid, then we need to start adding CSS code to say how we want things to appear. So let's add some CSS. I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to type the head tag. Now the head tag is where we enter things that we don't want to appear on the page, but which could be uh, program code and things like that, uh, which control the web page in other ways. Now, in this case, what I want to write in the head is CSS code. So I put CSS code inside the style tag. So I'll write style. OK, now um, you might remember that CSS code works by writing the name of the thing that you want to change and then uh, using some commands to change how that looks on the screen. So the first thing I want to change is that I want to have a black border around every square. That means I want to change the TD command. So I write TD, table data, and then I use those curly brackets, which are probably next to P on your keyboard. Now inside, I'm going to say what I want to change. So I'll put border, uh, one pixel, solid, black. So this, is, this says that I want a one pixel thick border. Now I write pixel as just PX. I want it to be a solid border, and obviously I want it to be a black border. And if I hit reload now, you see that I do have a grid. Now, it's certainly not the grid I want because at the moment each square is really tiny and also there are spaces between the squares, but we can fix that using CSS. So the first thing is let's make each square bigger. I'll write width and let's say 20, 20 pixels wide for each square. If I save that and reload, you can see that now the squares are wider. Of course, we want them to be taller as well. So that's the next step. I write height and that can also be 20 PX and save and hit reload. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like a crossword, but we've still got these ugly spaces between each cell. So what I want to do is to check, get rid of that space. And that means I want to change the table command itself. So I'll go up here and I'll type table and an open curly bracket. Now, to get rid of that space, you have to write border collapse and collapse. So that collapses the border, which basically means that those spaces disappear. Let's reload. And there you go. Now we've got a grid for our crossword. OK, um, so let's put a word into our crossword. Um, I think the first question I'll put in my crossword um, Maybe it could be about um, the toxic substance used in computer monitors. Um, so that would be mercury for LCD monitors. Um, so uh, let's find a convenient space. M-E-R-C-U-R-Y, it's seven letters long. So I think I'm going to start one down and then maybe go down here. So I'll put an M here and then an E, then R, 
and C and U R and Y. And if I save that and then reload, and there we are, the word is fitted in. Um, now I better add the question at the bottom. So I'm going to go down to the bottom after table because this isn't inside the grid, but before body because I do still want this to appear on the page. And I'm going to write H2 uh, because this is the second heading. That was the first heading. So H2 and then these are going to be clues for downwards. Okay for downwards words and then slash h2 okay now um, the clues need to be numbered so i'm going to use the ol command which stands for ordered list and then to put something in the list we use the li command which is for list item so my first clue is going to be a toxic chemical used in LCD monitors and save and hit reload and there we go. So there's the uh, there's the clue. Now this is clue number one. So what I want is a little one to appear at the M and I can do that using the soup command. So I write soup tag put one and then slash soup and that soup stands for superscript so it's going to make a small one in the top left corner like that okay um now just to make it neater i'll just change that to say down because most crosswords just say down and across. i'll make a heading for across as well save that reload and there we go so i've got one clue and one answer in my crossword OK, now we can definitely improve the style of this crossword. Um, so the first thing I want to do is that squares which don't have letters in them should be completely black. So we used TD earlier to change the style of the boxes. Um, and we can select only the boxes which don't have letters in them and make those black by writing TD and then a colon and then the word empty. So this will select only the empty cells in the table. And then the empty cells, I want to set the background to black. Now if I save that and reload, now you can see that's blacked out all of the cells that don't have letters in. Okay, now the next step is that um, those letters, they're kind of wonky. They're all aligned to the left hand side of the cell. I want them to be centered. So I just write text align center here inside the TD because this is changing those TD the way that TD appears. So I want the text to be centered. And if I reload that, that looks a bit neater now. Now, I don't really like the way that the one is pushing the M a little bit to the right. So what I'm going to do is change that. That is the soup command. And if I write soup position absolute, then that's going to fix that problem. Um, now, it does mean that the M appears over the top of the one. So you might say that you can't read that very well. But don't worry, there's a solution to that. So what we're actually going to do is hide the letters uh, because we don't want the answers to appear at the very beginning of the crossword. So the way to hide those letters is that I'm going to go back to TD and then I'm just going to write color for the text color and I'm going to set the text color to white. So it's going to be white text from a white background. If I reload, you can see that now gets rid of the letters. Now, unfortunately, that got rid of the number of the clue as well, but that's OK because we wrote soup here. So if we want that clue to appear again, we just say that we want the soup number to be in black color. And now reload and then we've got the soup number at the top and that matches the clue down here. And then the let the answers themselves are hidden. Now you can actually select it with a mouse to make the letters appear. Later on, we'll show how to use JavaScript 
um, to make the letters appear automatically when you type in an answer. OK, so um, guys, I think that covers enough HTML coding um, for this lesson. So then uh, what I would like you guys to have a go at is uh, for the rest of this lesson, you're going to add some clues into your word search and you're going to write the clues down here. Now you can also use some of the CSS commands that we studied before um, to make this look a bit more stylish. So um, you know, for example, how to align text. So I think it probably would look better if some of these things were aligned in the center of the page. Um, you could maybe have a background picture on the web page. Um, if you still have your notes from the earlier lessons, then you'll remember how to do that. Um, you could also do things like having different colors for the titles, maybe even have some different text fonts and things like that. Um, so guys, the more you uh, remember from those earlier lessons, the more um, weird effects and uh, different design choices you can make on this exercise. OK, but what I want you to do is that although you're going to be making the same basic crossword, as I am, you're going to have your own individual style and your own questions, and it's going to be very much your own product at the end of it. OK, it's going to be um, something that you've created independently. So guys, I hope that all made sense. Obviously, if you didn't understand anything, then please ask me and I'll give you a little bit of help.